Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about something a little different. Rather than all of the political videos that all the astrologers are doing, I thought I might talk about something that we all want to know about that's very interesting when we're looking at charts. And I thought I might give you a little dissertation about what you see in a chart that would indicate creative talent, especially artistic talent. Now, probably this video won't get near the views as the political ones, but it is a very valuable video in terms of understanding astrology technique, especially Vedic astrology technique. And you know, it's so hard to get people to really listen to anything right now, much less about a change. Everyone's stuck in their ways. People want to look at everything from Western tropical astrology because that's what they're used to. But I always tell everybody, don't you want to learn something new? And that's what I'm here to do in this video. I want to introduce the beautiful techniques of Vedic astrology. You see, when you're working with the Vedic chart, because the signs will change, you're going to have a whole different scenario of planets that rule each of the houses. So that's what I find makes this system so much more accurate. And remember, this is a science. It's not talking about your sun sign. We're talking about planets ruling houses and what houses they're in. And oh my God, you can see so much detail and intricate things about a human being in their chart. This is fabulous. So before I get going, I want to remind everyone to sign up for my free newsletter. Go to galacticcenter.org and you will get my predictions every week to your email free. Now, another thing is I am starting the university. So if any of this really, really connected with you and you want to learn the science of Vedic astrology, I have an amazing online school. It's self-paced, but I'm starting my first semester live classes September 22nd. So get ready for that. And last but not least, if you haven't signed up for the Galactic Planner, it's still free, but, but not for long. You will get to try your first month free, absolutely free. And you can cancel if you don't like it. So go to galacticplanner.com. Let's get going and let's talk about how in a Vedic chart you're going to be able to see creative talent. Now, first of all, the houses are so important in astrology. There are 12 houses and each house represents a different area of life. It's that simple. And every area of our life is contained in a certain house, depending on what it is, every area, whether it's marriage, whether it's work, whether it's career, whether it's purpose, and of course, creative talent. What houses are the houses that deal with creative talent? It is definitely, and this is different than what I learned in Western, house number three. You know, when we were talking in Western astrology terms, the third house had nothing to do with creative talent. It dealt with communication skills. It dealt with writing and communication skills, traveling, learning, and brothers and sisters. But don't you know that the number three is the most creative number of all in numerology? It is. And the third house in Vedic astrology is all of the things I just mentioned. Yes, of course it deals with our communication skills, how we connect to people, talk, write. Writing is one thing. And it actually rules the hands. So it deals with things like like writing and of course, you know, typing, <laughs> but it is the house of creative talent too. As a matter of fact, 
When you think of what house deals with creativity, normally you're going to think of the fifth house. The fifth house is a house of creativity as well. But consider this, the fifth house is the third house from the third house. So if you start from the third house, third, fourth, fifth, the fifth house deals with creative talent as well, but it originates from the third house. So in astrology, I'm going to show you an example. Don't worry. In astrology, we're going to be looking at the third house and the fifth house and any ways that those houses are connected. There are other houses that I've seen come out with massive creative talent, but one planet that is really about creative talent is usually Venus. Venus is the planet of art, beauty, design, color. It's the, it is the planet that deals with all forms of the arts, whether it be music, whether it be fashion design, whether it deals with decorating a house. Venus is that planet that deals with the aesthetic beauty, beauty of things, whether it's flowers and nature or paintings or music, it deals with beauty. So we're going to be looking at Venus and we're going to be looking at the third and the fifth houses. Now, when I show you this chart that I'm about to show you, interestingly enough, and I wanted you to see this, there are no planets in the third or the fifth house. So what you do in astrology is people say, well, does that mean I don't have any talent or I don't have anything associated with that house? No, the planet that rules that house tells you everything about that house. And one thing that you do have to learn in astrology, it's not just, you know, knowing signs and personalities. It is what planets rule the signs. That is number one importance that you have to be able to do to read a chart. So just like Mars rules Aries, Venus rules Taurus and so on. But there is a planet that rules a sign. Therefore, the signs that are on the houses are ruled by that planet. And therefore, wherever that planet resides speaks volumes and volumes about that house. So, you know, you may not have any planets in your seventh house of marriage, but you're married. That's, you know, this is not what you do. It's not, it's, it's more, of a science. Let me just show you, but let me show you a chart that I thought will really bring home exactly what I'm talking about in astrology. And I want to make this class so that everyone can understand, regardless if you have any information in astrology. So please follow along. You're going to get it and you're going to want to know more once you see what I do with this. So, I'm going to scoot over here and we're going to put up the chart of Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh was a remarkable artist. He had a very difficult life. He was an impressionist and he uh, resided later. He was born in the Netherlands, but he ended up residing in Paris or France. But he died at age 37, had a rough life. But let's look at his chart in terms of his artistic ability. So I found this time for him and what kind of bothers me, but I'm just going to go with it, is that his rising ascendant degree is 29 degrees and there's 30 degrees to assign. So it's right on the cusp of changing is what I'm trying to say, but I'm going to go with it because this chart makes sense. But I want you to also understand something that I do in astrology, all Vedic astrologers do. We look at a chart from the moon being the ascendant. So the ascendant is always the mark of the first house. Now the ascendant that we arrive with with any chart is based on your birth time. So that's what determines what sign is rising. And what is the ascendant? It's actually the sign that is rising on the eastern horizon at the time of birth. You see the whole zodiacal wheel in 24 hours 
turns as the earth turns every 24 hours and goes through all 12 signs. And so depending on what time you're born, there will be one of the 12 signs rising and that sets up your first house. And this is interesting, maybe you don't think it is, but I do, that, in, that each sign rises on the eastern horizon every two hours. One will come from the beginning to the end of the sign in a two hour span. And there's 24 hours in a day, therefore 12 signs will revolve across the eastern horizon every 24 hours. So at the time of Van Gogh's birth, Gemini was the sign rising, but it was right at the last final degree, which means that he was born four minutes later. He would have had a cancer ascended, but I'm going to base it on Gemini. And then we're going to look at the chart from the moon. Okay, stick with me here. You're going to find this fascinating. So looking at his chart, go to his third house. It's Leo. Leo is the sign that's on the third house. So if it's the sign, it's Gemini. Gemini's the first, Cancer's the second, Leo is the third. This is how the whole chart set up where there's a sign on each of the 12 houses. And then once you know what planet rules that sign, which Leo is ruled by the sun, you look to see where that planet sits in the chart. And that will tell you everything about the house. The third house is the house of talent and creativity. It's also a house that deals with performers and entertainers as well. But the sun sits in his 10th house. Look at it there in the 10th house. So the ruler of the third house of cre creativity goes to the 10th house, which is your career. House number 10 is your career. So what was his career? He was an artist, the ruler of the third and the 10th. Isn't that fascinating? And then let's go to the fifth house, which is the third from the third. Therefore, it is the other house of creative talent, expression, if I must say. I always say the fifth house is our need to express ourselves. So it deals a lot with the theater. It deals a lot with dance. And so does the third house. We have to express. In art, painting, drawing is how we express ourselves through art, right? So if you go to the fifth house, starting from Gemini, the first, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra is the fifth house. There's no planets there. No planets in the third, no planets in the fifth. Let's go to where the planet that rules the fifth is. So Libra is the fifth house, the sign on the fifth house, and the planet that rules Libra is Venus. And remember, Venus is the planet of the arts. So let's go over to where Venus sits in this chart. And it's in the 10th house, and it sits right next to the sun. So again, remember the 10th house deals with what? deals with create, I mean, the 10th house is your career, the fifth house is creativity, the third house is creativity. So both planets, the ruler of the third and the fifth, are conjunct together in the 10th house of career. He was an artist, that was his career. Ruler of the third with the ruler of the fifth. And those two planets together exemplify his career. Now, another very interesting fact about where his Venus is, and remember Venus is the arts all by itself. Venus sits in the sign of Pisces, which this is another interesting variable. Certain signs are more powerful for, for cert, certain planets. So Venus, its most powerful sign that it can be in, by the way, is its exaltation sign, which is Pisces. So the planet of art, creativity, sits in Pisces, its exaltation sign. In the highest house of the chart, the 10th house is considered the career, your social standing, the highest point in a chart. That's pretty incredible that you can read his career would be the arts. And because Venus, not only is it exalted in Pisces, 
but it's in an angular house, which are the strongest houses. What are the angles? Houses one, four, seven, and 10. To have Venus exalted in the 10th house represents an artist. Why? Because they say when you have a planet exalted or in its sign of rulership, Venus also rules Libra and it rules Taurus. If you had it in any of those three signs, Venus is all powerful, but it's exaltation sign supposed to be the strongest. But Venus and Taurus are just about as good. But whenever it's in one of those three signs, any planet is exalted or in its own sign in an angle. Houses one, four, seven, or 10. That planet has a superior power and it's called a Mahapurusha Yoga, which means it's in an angle in its own sign or exalted. And that means whatever that planet concerns, what it's about, what it rules, is going to be everything that that person is. So everything about Venus is what Vincent van Gogh is, an artist. I think that's pretty powerful. So that's how you can see artistic ability in a chart. But then the next step I want to take you through is the next thing I do is then I check a chart from the moon. In other words, you look at the moon as the ascendant. And I know a lot of people go, why don't you, why don't you use the sun? Well, you do in Western astrology. There is a very specific reason why we look at the moon. And it's not only just because the moon does rule how you feel about everything in your life, which is pretty darn important, right? Yes. But in Vedic astrology, the moon actually will determine when everything happens to you in your life. Why? Well, this is a whole nother part of the science, but whatever nakshatra, 27 nakshatras, you're going to learn those in Vedic astrology too. They're so meaningful. Why? Because their meanings come from the stars. There's 27 of them rich with meaning. The star portions in that portion of the sky gives it its depth and meaning. But here's the, th here's the thing, whatever nakshatra your natal moon is in, the planet that rules that nakshatra starts your whole life cycle and determines when everything happens in your life. That's one of the reasons why the moon is so important in Vedic astrology. So if you don't have your ascendant and you know what day you were moon, you were born, therefore you know where the moon was that day, you can make the moon the ascendant. And it, it reads to me, I'm not kidding you, many times more valuable than the ascendant because how you feel is everything in terms of the choices that you make in your life. So let's go to his moon. His moon sits in Scorpio. 28 degrees of Scorpio, make that the first house and then count to where Venus, Sun, Mars, and Pisces, count how many houses that is from the moon. So let's count one, two, three, four, five. Remember I told you the fifth house is the house, one of the houses of creativity and talent. And there he has Venus in Pisces in the fifth that is an artist as well. Very, very important. Now, also, if you go to the third house from the moon, it's Capricorn, one, two, three, and Saturn rules that. So you go to Saturn, it sits in the sixth house, but when you look at Saturn, I know it's not in a great sign. It's actually in a weak sign for Saturn, but Saturn is in Aries, and when you go over to where Aries is, Mars sits in the fifth. So its planet that rules it goes once more to the fifth. So, but regardless about his Saturn, the fact that he has Venus in Pisces in the fifth house from the moon is another huge determinant that this man will be very artistically inclined. So looking at the chart from those variables, you're going to see if someone is an artist, creative, 
And also, I have to say that I have found that Neptune can sometimes bring in some artistic ability. His Neptune is, um, well, it's in the fourth house from the moon, but it's in the ninth house from the ascendant. But he doesn't have any planets with Neptune, so I'm not going to give it a lot of uh, importance. But I just want you to know there are certain planets that will denote creativity and talent. The first one to look for is Venus. And this chart, just generally, I just did some very basic, very basic things in astrology for you to see how you can find artistic ability. So it's the third house, the fifth house from the ascendant and then from the moon. And remember, planets being in those houses are very powerful. But even though here is one of the most famous artists of, our t of the 20th century, or the 19th century, excuse me, he was born in the 1800s, he has no planets in houses three and five. So you always, always have to look at the ruling planets of those houses to get a better feel of what the individual is all about. You just don't look at where, what planets are in what houses, but the rulers. That's the real science of astrology. And yes, you do this as well in Western astrology, the rulers of houses and what houses they go to. But I find that the Vedic system worked for me when I did that with Western. And remember, I did Western astrology for 20 years and it's valuable, but it doesn't do as much as the Vedic for me. I've worked with both of them equally as long. So, so trust me when I say I have worked both systems. I can make an, uh, an intelligent opinion about this because I've worked them. People that haven't worked with uh, certain systems of astrology have no right to talk about them, not unless they've done the entire science uh, from beginning to end. And most people that have worked with both will have the, a similar, and I mean worked with it for years, not for one year. <laughs> I get a kick out of these people that think they're astrologers after studying a year. So <laughs> you have to practice anything for many years to learn the true science behind something. And that goes with medicine, anything. Would you go to a medical doctor that's been studying for one year? Think about it. This is really the reality of, of studying a science uh, per se. So. With that, I think I'll close. Remember, if this was of interest to you, I tried to make this as simple as possible. If this is an, of an interest to you, I'm starting my semester one, September 22nd. Come join us. We have an amazing school, people from every country in the world learning Vedic astrology live online, become my teacher. I mean, become my student, yes. That was probably a Freudian slip. You will become my teacher. So, so with that, I'll close. And remember, if you would like to have your galactic planner with all of your chart deciphered and put into your calendar, sign up galacticplanner.com and sign up for my newsletter and become part of my Patreon, our spiritual community. Go to Joni Petrie at the Patreon at Joni Petrie, and you can find all that on galacticcenter.org. Thank you.